Hey, what's going on? This is Troy, and this is the Planet 76 Podcast, your source for Sixers news, highlights, hot takes, and more. Welcome to the show. Michael, you know what uh, you know what day it is today? Uh, Any idea? I'm putting you on the spot right off the jump. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was not expecting this. I don't know. I don't know. So other than September 10th, okay. Uh, today, and I don't know if I don't, you might care about this, you might not. Today is 2K day because uh, NBA 2K dropped. So I'm not buying. 2K are you a 2K fan? I am. You're, are you a 2K guy in the past? Why not this year? That kind of thing. Let's hear it. Well, well, here it is. For me, I might get roasted for this. I still have PS4. I don't like. I haven't bought a PS5. I probably am. I'm probably not going to for a while. Also, I'm not right. buying the new 2K. I just, I don't even know if I'm gonna like have the have the urge to play it. Plus, I mean, let's be honest, the game hasn't been great for the past few years. It's been good, but I, I don't. From what I've seen, I'm like, eh, I don't really need 2K this year. So, probably not gonna buy it. Unfortunately. Yeah. No. <laughs> It's been good. It's been good. Not mm-hmm. great. You're right. Last few years, but uh, guess who got sucked into it again and uh, was on at midnight last night when the 2K servers were down oh, and everybody man. was trying to get on. <laughs> that was me. I'm guessing it was night. you. <laughs> but the reason that was me. The reason I bring 2K up is because so I played. I'm actually in quarantine right now, so mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons I probably got it. The second reason uh, that I wanted to bring it up is because. I was playing, like, my career. I got drafted by the Thunder because uh, they have 18,000 picks, so, of course, they picked me. Um, <laughs> and then, like, game three was against the Sixers, and I saw something, a lineup on the Sixers team that I hope to never see oh, no. um, on the floor together at the same time. Uh, two players in particular. Something that, like, like it will never happen. Um do you have any guesses as to who that could be? Two players that were on the floor at the same time together. Uh, they've never been on the same f- floor together. They're both on the team right now. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I this this intro has been throwing me for a loop, so I'm not sure. But I will. <laughs> if it's, I'm gonna make an educated guess because if it has to do with players that we're gonna be talking about in this episode then I think I might be in the right direction. Nope, not at all, actually. Okay, well, then I have no idea. No idea. All right, so one... All right, so one's Joel Embiid, and the second person with him plays the same position. Oh, no. Oh, Oh, no. Yes. It's Andre Drummond, isn't it? Yes. Andre Uh, Drummond and Joel Embiid were on the floor together in 2K22. (laughs) So let's just say I hope that never happens. I hope we never have to see that. Uh, but anyway, it's 2K day, and uh, I've been playing 2K. You hear Michael's thoughts on it too, but you know we'll let that slide. Uh, this is Planet 76, your source for Sixers news, updates, hot takes, and a whole lot more. Uh, I'm one of your co-hosts, Troy. You just heard Michael as well. Michael, what are we getting into for real today after that intro? <laughs> after that intro, I don't know what's going to be able to top that, but... We're going to be discussing some of the young guys on our squad, discussing um, how their careers could play out, maybe where we see them in terms of, of, of what am I trying to say? In terms of like how they'll pan out, in terms of what these guys will become, possibly, maybe some ceilings for these, for these guys. And it's going to be a little bit harder to talk about that for some guys than others. But we're going to do our best, and we're just going to... We're just gonna have fun, mm-hmm. you know. We're just we don't really have a lot of notes for this episode. We're just gonna kind of see where it goes. Sounds good yep. to me. Where are we starting? So I say we start with Tyrese Maxey. We could also start with Jaden Springer. We can go we can go bottom to top or top to bottom. I'll let you decide since you did make the uh, thing. Let's go. Let's go, Tyrese Maxey. We'll start top All to right. bottom. All right. So. 
our, my thoughts on Tyrese Maxey, um, I think he is awesome. You know I'm a huge fan of Tyrese Maxey. 20 years old at Kentucky, averaged, what, eight, nine points a game last year. Gave us a spark several times when needed. Um, how I see his career playing out? That's a tough one. One player that came to mind in comparison. So I, I kind of tried to write down a comparison for each. Uh, a couple of my stall off the internet. This one I did not. This one was Lou Williams. Um, okay. Just in their build, uh, just in their ability to go get a bucket. Obviously, he's not Lou Williams in his Lou Williams prime, but uh, he's got potential there. Um Obviously, his three-point shooting can improve, and I think it did toward the end of the season, but he was around 30% from three. I would love to see that improve. Um, I don't know about you, but I mean, I think that he... Now, Lou Williams is, a, is you know, notable six-man kind of guy. I mean, I think Tyrese Maxey can certainly be a starter in the NBA. Um, that's my take on him. Um... I definitely, uh, before I get into my thoughts, I definitely agree that he could be a starter in the NBA. It just depends on the team. Um, and, you know, he, again, he Daryl Morey stole Tyrese Maxey at 21 last year. We shouldn't even, we shouldn't even have Tyrese Maxey. He should have went long before the Sixers drafted. So he kind of just fell to us. Like, we are, we have been spoiled with Tyrese Maxey in terms of, what this kid's been able to do and how good he looks right now, even for well, going into his second year. But in terms of, I mean, I'm going to have to go with a lot of what you said in terms of his career. I could see him being a really solid guy. Again, maybe a starter, maybe a sixth man on, on, on certain teams, whether he's, you know, on the Sixers, whether he's elsewhere, all depends, but he's going to be, a, he's going to be a solid player. Um, good score he, he he can as you said he can get buckets um I, somebody i forget where i saw it maybe on my account somebody someone compared him to Dwayne Wade and i was like let's not go that far right now i don't let's not go there i thought to myself what am i missing here to be totally disagreeing with this claim um mm -hmm. But I could see... Yeah, that's an interesting yeah, one. Yeah, definitely. But I could see Tyrese Maxey, in terms of player, hmm, player comp, I mean, that's tough, you know? And some of these guys are going to be a little bit easier than others in terms of player comps. Mm -hmm. Tyrese Maxey, I mean, who's like a gritty guard type player? I mean, maybe like a, like a tough guard. I mean, maybe Kyle Lowry without the without the shooting ability because I don't know how much better Tyrese and without the body true. weight <laughs> with <laughs> I don't know how much better Maxi will get as a shooter obviously he has time to improve right. and that's where I would like to see him improve a lot in his defense um I don't know if he's going to be the shooter that Lowry, uh, Lowry will be but maybe just the toughness and the build because they're both kind of smaller guards but they're they're tougher I feel like they can get to their spots mm -hmm. I'll go Kyle Lowry for the sake of, like I said, body okay. type and abilities on the offensive end. But aside for shooting. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I think yeah. so, too. I think even – I just thought of one uh, older guy, retired now, who just in terms of his speed in his younger days is Tony Parker. Okay. Okay. You know um, what? Yeah. Just, just I like how that. quick he is. Yeah, I like you that. Know? Um, yeah, that could be one too. What do you think would be Maxi's? However, you want to define ceiling, whether like his best season he averages fill in the blank, or his ceiling is seventeen time All Star. Like, what is his ceiling that you would say right now after year one? See, that's the thing. It's that's going to be a really hard conclusion to tough. come to because. I mean, I could see him being a multi-time all-star, but I could also just see him being a very, very good role player and a very good starting point guard, just not all-star caliber enough. It, it's all going to depend on his development and his situation because, he, I mean, he's talented, but depending on where he's at, you know, there's going to be, there's yeah. always going to be more talented guys than him. And I don't know, it's right now, 
I mean, I would just I would just take the safe road and say he's going to be a very solid starting point guard. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, it is it is very difficult. It is very tough. So if I were to toss out a number, Tyrese Maxey's best statistical season scoring, he averages 18, would you say over or under? I, I mean, I, I would say 18, but I don't think, I don't think, I wouldn't say much over, so I'll just go the under, but I'll say maybe close enough to 18. Mm-hmm. Where it's not quite eighteen, maybe like seventeen and a half. I could see it. Right. I could definitely okay. see it. Yeah, I definitely could too. Just yeah. curious of what you would think on that one, because I mean, you never know. He's so young. Right. I mean, you never know. He right. he could be a guy that, that you know, a couple years averages twenty. Like we just don't know. And again, it it even as you noted, it depends on a lot for a guy like that on the situation he's in. Tyrese Maxey can absolutely average 20 oh, yeah. on a non-contending team where he is the second option, third option. But if he um, continues to stay in a place like Philly where there's you know tons and tons of options, um, you know he's not going to. So it really just depends on how he sees his uh, career playing out and with the team around him, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> yeah, I, de- I you know he's got to improve from three. He's got to yeah. improve defensively. I think Tyrese too like. Um, a lot of what he did well this year was in flashes, if that makes sense. Like, he would have these spurts where you're just like, this yes. guy's amazing. Um, you know, and then it would have segments where that wasn't the case, I guess. Not that he was just awful. I can't recall looking at a game and saying Tyree sucked. Um, not like multiple times in a row, but like, I think consistency for him. Um, and I think that'll come yeah. as, he, as he develops and grows and matures and... Um, you know, gets three, four, five years under his belt. He's just gonna, he's gonna mature. He's gonna get better. He's gonna be consistent. That's what good players do, and I think he's committed to that. So, um, excited to see what Tyrese is gonna do wherever that might be. Hopefully in Philly. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> Who's next? So next we got Shake Milton, <laughs> and this is this is gonna be one of the easier ones for me. Right, take it away. Um, That's this your is boy. gonna be one of the. Yes, definitely. This is going to be one of the easier ones for me because um, a lot of people have made the comparison already, and I'm just going to piggyback off of that mostly. But I can see Shake Milton becoming like a Lou Williams type guy, just a straight, just a guy, just a go-to scorer, sixth man, seventh man off the bench when you need a bucket. We've seen it happen. He, he's he's played this role very well. He just needs to be more consistent. But he's still pretty young, only 24. And I could see him definitely developing into that sort of role. And he's gotten a little better defensively since entering the league. So I think he'll be like a, a, a bigger Lou Williams who's also not bad on defense. Maybe not as... Maybe not as... What's the word I'm looking for? Maybe not as... like Maybe not with the longevity that Lou Williams has had. But I could definitely okay. see him becoming that, that sort of go-to bucket getter kind of guy. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Because, and again, like you said, he's just a bigger version of that. Um, because he can score, he can really score from anywhere. Um, not that he's, you know, tremendous everywhere. He's good for I mean, you're not surprised if he knocks down a mid range. You're not right. surprised if he gets to the rim. You're not surprised if he gets a floater. You're not surprised if he knocks it down from three. Um, so he's, and he's crafty. Lou Williams is very crafty as well. Um, I mean, yeah, I think Shake Milton, I think his ceiling, best, best, best case scenario. Um, not saying that he can't be a starter. I mean, the Sixers even tried that, and they're a good team. But I think, like, the best kind of career thing, like, you know, you say this guy won a six-man of the year award, something like that um, yeah. would be pretty cool. And I think I think his floor – Best I think he's. Scenario. I think he's worst case scenario. His floor might be now, how he is now, and that's not to say that he's great right now. He's very good. Um, but if he doesn't improve at all, I think this could be the worst that he will be. Which, you know, he didn't have a great season, but he definitely had flashes of of great play, of of great production, and. As you said, you know, and we all of us said, but I think somewhere 
somewhere between here and a Lou Williams type player is where I w- would would put Shea mm-hmm. Milton right now at least. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fair. No, that's a good point. I think. I mean, Shake. Um, again, if he's as good as he's gonna get, he's gonna be yeah. in the league. That that's what we need to know. This isn't a trial thing anymore. Um, for a late, you know, second round draft pick who's only twenty four years old. I mean, he's established himself as part of the NBA. So many late second round draft picks, you know, don't pan out, and he has. Um, and so it's really, really cool to see uh, he'll, he'll be around the league for a while. I mean, you got to see it that way. So, um, yeah, that's good. That's good on Shake. I like it. What about improvements for him? So improvement, one one big improvement is pretty glaring. He just needs to be more consistent as an offensive player because, as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, he had a couple games where he was dropping 25, 27 points. And that's something that if we had all season, the Sixers would have won a lot more games, especially in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- right. definitely in that area because we know like, he can do this. It just needs to be- come at a more mm-hmm. consistent level and a more reliable in a more reliable way too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, you might how – many games we were into the season when Shake was a part of that sixth man of the year conversation. Like oh, he yeah. was actually a part of it. I don't know how deep we were into the season. But you know, that just proves your point. Definitely. He can do it. Definitely. Yeah. He can do it. Um this guy's been around a little longer, but he's only twenty four years old. Furkan Korkmaz. Mm-hmm. Um so we're doing like twenty four and younger basically on the mm-hmm. current Sixers team. Furkan Korkmaz, um, I don't. This is one where I saw a comparison online, and I kind of like it actually. And the comparison online from when Furkan was drafted is Gordon Hayward. Hmm. I don't know if you believe that. What do you think about that? Let me think for a second. Fur- Furkan's more of a three-point, you know specialist on the Sixers. 